Oh god, it's Wednesday, and that means another list from that guy who won't shut up about slow bikes. Doesn't he know that I have my chiropractor on speed dial and enjoy lighting $400 on fire every month because I need hypersport tires? Well, first of all, Mr. Commenter, you'd get a lot more dollars per mile out of a sport touring tire, but you do you. And more importantly, yes, it's me, Spite, back at it again with another list talking about some of the sportiest cruisers you can run out and buy from the showroom, then go carve up your favorite favorite back road. Now, I hear the keys tapping away. You think there's no way a cruiser can hang with your 15-year-old R6? Because I roasted my chicken strips off, bro, and I totally did 186 miles an hour last week on the highway. First of all, no you didn't. And second, the street's not a racetrack, so at normal road speeds, and maybe a little over, because come on, who takes a turn at the recommended speed, a cruiser can keep pace with basically every other motorcycle. And as a side note, a 300 can too, so mm, food for thought. But seeing as cruisers are so varied and the rarest motorcycle on the planet is actually a stock sportster, I wanted to set some ground rules for today's video. One, bikes will be considered in their stock trims only, except for exhausts, Two, bikes must be marketed as a cruiser so no sport tours and no naked bikes will be featured. Three, a bike must still be available for purchase from dealers, so sorry Magna Bros. And finally, to make this a little bit more of a challenge for me, there will be no bikes from my muscle cruiser video here because no one wants to hear me wax poetic about the fat bob anymore. And for giggles, I'm going to go ahead and give you some exhaust clips of each of these bikes to show you that all cruisers don't sound the same. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at some of the sportiest cruisers out there. Number 7, the Honda Rebel 500. Ah, the Rebel, the introduction point for so many riders. Out of curiosity, how many people took their MSF course on some of those old Rebels? Let me know down below. If Honda can do one thing right, it's build a bulletproof motorcycle. I mean, you could probably toss the Rebel off a cliff and it'll turn over once it hits the ground. But anyway, the Rebel sports a 471cc parallel twin that they poached from the CBR 500R and it makes the same 45.9 horsepower and a face melting 31.7 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, a screamer this bike is not, but it will outlean every other bike on this list. The problem is this bike has an overly soft front fork and rear shocks, neither of which are adjustable. But if you're not built like me, the 408 pound curb weight shouldn't have you bottoming those shocks out too quickly. The Rebel also finds itself at the bottom of the list because it's a painfully slow motorcycle, and half of the fun of hitting the twisties is powering out of a corner. Plus, the engine makes sound, which is about the best thing you could say for the little parallel twin. Take a listen. But hey, at least it's cheap at $6,499 with ABS. Number 6, the Kawasaki Vulcan S. All right, I know this one's going to make people mad, but number six is the Kawasaki Vulcan S. I know that everybody thinks I hate these motorcycles, especially those people who own Vulcans, but I really don't. I just think they're a bland motorcycle. But opinions aside, what about the specs? Well, the Vulcan S has the Ninja 650's 649cc parallel twin power plant that makes 61 horsepower and 46.5 foot-pounds of torque, which is not bad and people have referred to the Ninja 650 as a jack of all trades. The only problem is that while it can do everything, it just doesn't do anything super well, and that's the same for the Vulcan S. It's a very modular platform with Kawasaki selling packages for short riders, tall riders, riders with four foot torsos and two inch legs like some sort of CycleErgo.com abomination come to life. They call it their ErgoFit system, and for $7,499, getting a bike with ergonomics tailored to fit you is pretty unheard of. However, with a budget unbranded fork, preload only rear shocks, and a single Nissan caliper up front, this bike really doesn't take well to being pushed. And the 650 engine just doesn't sound all that unique. Take a listen. Wait a minute, was that the Rebel again? No, seriously, here's what the Vulcan sounds like.
Don't believe me? I'm sure one of those very vocal Vulcan owners has their motorcycles up for rent on Twisted Road. And for those of you who don't know, Twisted Road is a peer-to-peer -peer motorcycle rental service where you can rent pretty much every bike under the sun. We've even used a few of them in our shoots. But maybe you've got too many bikes and you want to make some extra cash. Well, list them up on Twisted Road and let other people take a spin. Papa Yams believes in the idea so much that he put his money where his mouth is and invested in the company. If you click the link down below, you'll get a free day of rentals. And come on, who wouldn't want to ride a different bike for free? Use that link down below and get started. Now let's get back to some of these cruisers. Number five is the Yamaha Bolt R Spec. Ah, the Bolt R Spec. I've got some theories as to how this bike came to be, and my favorite thus far is that Yamaha just copied Harley Davidson's homework. I mean, take a look at these two bikes. They're basically the exact same, just one's $3,000 cheaper. But with the cheaper price tag comes cheaper components. Sure, the Bolt can lean over an impressive 37 degrees, but the suspension will hold you there with all the confidence of an FZ07, which is to say it'll have you begging to whatever deity you pray to that that mid-corner bump isn't going to cause the head to shake. The R-Spec does sport some more upmarket piggyback shocks in the rear, which should keep you firmly planted, though. The engine makes a respectable 65 horsepower and 59.3 foot-pounds of torque, but it only has one single 298mm rotor up front with a Yamaha house caliper, so it's not exactly going to stop on a dime. But what really makes the Bolt great, though, is its relatively short 62-inch wheelbase, which gives it a more nimble turn-in than some of the other cruisers on this list. Also, with a price tag of $8,499, it'll give you all the looks and feel of a Sportster without that Harley-shaped hole in your budget. Now let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Number 4, the Indian Scout. From the Japanese knockoff to the genuine article, the Indian Scout is an absolutely timeless motorcycle. Seriously, if you put one of these on the set of Easy Rider, I'd bet no one would notice. But this bike is no 1960s classic. It's packing an 1133cc liquid-cooled V-twin engine, putting down 100 horsepower and 72.2 foot-pounds of torque, making it the fastest bike on today's list. The Scout tips the scales at 544 pounds wet and sports an approachable 25 0.6 inch seat height. Its forward pegs give it a healthy lean angle of 29 degrees before you start scraping shiny things, but the real downside to this bike is the suspension. Yeah, I know, it's kind of a common theme, but it's almost like these bikes weren't designed to drag a knee. Anyway, with a non-adjustable Indian fork and a preload-only shock in the rear, you're gonna feel a little bit of flex and wiggle out of this bike mid-corner. Another black eye for the Scout is how the engine makes its power. In stark contrast to the typical cruiser V-Twin, the Scout makes all its power above 4,000 RPM, which means you'll need to keep the engine on the boil to really feel it. Surprisingly though, reviewers have praised how well the Scout turns in despite its big fat cruiser front tire. Let's hear what the Scout sounds like. Number three, the Harley-Davidson Roadster 1200. Oh God, here we go again. Spite's gonna go off on some long tirade about how Harleys are an emotional and amazing and worth the price tag, but the Roadster is the only bike on this list that ships with factory upside down forks, so it's not really mincing words about what it's here to do. Also, I had to fight every fiber of my being not to put this in the number one slot, so appreciate my sacrifice, damn it. The Roadster is powered by the air cooled 1202cc Evo V-twin engine you'd find in pretty much every other Sportster. It makes 69.2 horsepower and 73.5 foot-pounds of torque, which is only backwards to use sport bike boys. The crazy thing is that this Harley ships with a 30.9 inch seat height, low forward swept handlebars, and mids putting the rider in a tighter clamshell shape more reminiscent of a sport bike than a cruiser. Not only that, but it's the only Sportster to feature dual discs up front. With a max lean angle of 30.8 inches before you start dragging the exhaust, it'll probably lean more than you do on your fire blade. 
You could easily get another inch or two of lean with taller shocks and higher pipes, but we're talking about the stock bike here, so you're stuck with what you got. The Roadster weighs in at 567 pounds wet, but you wouldn't know it when you get the bike leaned over. Just don't push it too hard, because the stock Michelin Scorchers aren't exactly designed with canyons in mind. You'll have to pay $11,749 for the privilege, but that's not too bad for a Harley. Let's hear what it sounds like. Number 2, the Triumph Bonneville Speedmaster. So maybe this one is me making up for putting the Rocket 3 at the bottom of my muscle cruiser list, or maybe the Speedmaster is just that good. You be the judge. The Speedmaster is basically the bobber, but with all the stuff they took off of it, put back on. As such, it makes the same 77 horsepower and 78 foot-pounds of torque from its 1179cc parallel twin engine, but it does carry a little extra weight around at 541 pounds dry. The real reason that the Speedmaster finds itself so high on today's list is its suspension and brakes. It sports 41mm non-adjustable Showa's up front and a KYB shock in the rear, and it's got dual disc 310mm rotors and floating Brembo calipers. Sure this thing isn't going to have you drag a knee around a track, but on a weekend ride down a back road, this thing is going to keep you firmly planted on the pavement and it's going to give you more positive feedback than any other bike on this list. Unlike the bobber however, this bike comes with American style forwards, buying you a few more degrees of lean and a nice relaxed seating position. The only real knock against this bike is the price at $13,150 and when you come in pricier than a Harley, that makes it kind of a tough sell. At least you've got that 270 degree crank giving you some sweet exhaust notes. Take a listen. Suck on that one, Vulcan boys. Number 1, the Moto Guzzi V9 Bobber Sport. What the hell is a Guzzi doing at the top of any list beyond bikes no one's ever heard of? And it's true, this one's a total oddball. The main draw of a Guzzi is their use of the transverse or opposed V-twin, which means that way back in the 1960s, Luigi came back from his lunch hour just a little too relaxed from his midday bottle of vino, and he accidentally bolted the engine on sideways. When his buddy Vito came in and asked him what the hell, he shrugged and said, eh, it gives it to more character. And they've been doing it that way ever since. The V9 Bobber is one of the weakest bikes on this list, making only 55 horsepower and 45.7 foot-pounds of torque. But what the V9 has that makes it unique among these bikes is the switchable traction control, ABS, and a shaft drive. So, hey, no chain maintenance. It's also rocking piggyback Olin shocks and a 31-inch seat height. When you put all this together, you get a bike that feels planted in a corner, and with that TC baked in, any beginner can hop on this bike and go have a good time. The only real drawback Back to the Guzzi is that it's just a weird bike. It does a bunch of weird stuff like squirm side to side at a stoplight, shake and rattle a bit, and the clutch and transmission just kind of clunk together. But you don't buy a Guzzi because you want a Honda smooth riding experience. And hey, at $10,690, it's not too bad for what you're getting. Let's hear what that transverse V twin sounds like. And there you have it, seven of the sportiest cruisers you can go buy today. Let me know down below which one you would want to own if you couldn't own a sport bike. And I know you Vulcan boys have already sounded off, so let me get your second pick. Personally, if I couldn't have the Harley, I'd take the Guzzi just for some of that Italian flair. As always, remember, if you like what we do here, click the link down below and head over to yamminoob.co to sign up and support us. You'll get instant access to the Discord server, some exclusive content, and automatic entry to the giveaway. We've also got Yammy Noob merch for those of y'all with a fear of commitment or being criminally unfair fashionable. Every dollar you spend there will get you an entry to win one of the bikes. Thanks for all the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Fact. The hashtag symbol, or pound sign for you boomers, is actually called an octothorpe. I can't imagine why octothorpe didn't catch on. Goodbye.